Emerging evidence suggests that there's a lot of synergy and overlap between exercise and sauna therapy. In today's show, we're going to review that evidence and talk about how you can maximize the health benefits from both exercise and sauna therapy when it comes to metabolic health, reducing your risk for cardiovascular disease and cardiovascular disease related complications, and even assisting in weight loss. This, there's been several recently published studies that we're going to dive into that I think are very fascinating. And one paper we're going to lean on with regards to providing some concrete evidence for this hypothesis, again, that exercise and sauna therapy are synergistic modalities that can help to optimize your health, was recently published in Mayo Clinic Proceedings titled, Does the Combination of Finnish Sauna Breathing and Other Lifestyle Factors Confer Additional Health Benefits? A review of the evidence. This was published by Yari Laukinen, who has published a lot of different studies when it comes to the risk reduction from cardiovascular disease and dementia and Alzheimer's with regards to uh, sauna therapy. And we know there's a lot of great research supporting the benefits of sauna therapy, including several observational and interventional studies suggesting that regular or frequent sauna bathing reduces the risk of vascular and non-vascular diseases such as hypertension, cardiovascular disease, mortality, sudden cardiac death, stroke, dementia, venous thromboembolism, all-cause mortality, lung diseases, psychotic disorders, and also improvements in musculoskeletal disorders such as osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia, even reduction in COVID-19 disease severity, improvements in lung conditions, chronic bronchitis, as well as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and even extension of lifespan. So there's a lot of great things that we're going to talk about, including the beneficial effects of sauna bathing on adverse outcomes have been linked to its reduction in blood pressure, anti-inflammatory properties, antioxidant properties, cytoprotective properties, stress reduction properties, and I will add improvements in sleep and sleep quality, and the synergistic effect on the cardiovascular on the cardiovascular, circulatory, and immune functions. Evidence suggests that frequent sauna bathing is an emerging protective risk factor that may augment the beneficial effects of other protective lifestyle factors, such as physical activity, cardiorespiratory fitness, like aerobic fitness, and attenuate or offset the adverse effects of other risk factors, such as high blood pressure, systemic inflammation, and low socioeconomic status. And I think that's really important to recognize that this could be a public health tool to impact or mitigate the health effects of processed food consumption, sedentary activity, uh, stress, and the like. So I think we should be having sauna therapy you know, centers, uh, maybe making this uh, more accessible to the public and not sort of relegated to something for people who have affluence. I think this would be really beneficial. So one of the papers that you really need to know, know about, and this was actually published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. Uh, this is from the Kyopio uh, Heart Disease Risk Factor Study. This is an ongoing study that is almost as old as I am. This is about 39 years old here. This has been going on since 1984, an ongoing cohort in Finland which found a 63% risk reduction in sudden cardiac death if you go in the sauna four days per week and a 40% reduction in all-cause mortality. Again, this was published in none other than the Journal of the American Medical Association. So if that doesn't wake you up to the idea that going in the sauna is worthwhile, spending the time to listen to an audiobook, check out Blinkist, read some scientific articles like we like to do on this show. We like to link all of this, the show notes and the articles that we talk about uh, in the details here in the link below so you can check that out. Uh, another study that will be in the link below here is titled, Sauna Bathing is Associated with Reduced Cardiovascular Mortality and Improves Risk Prediction uh, in Men and Women, a Prospective Cohort Study. And essentially what this particular cohort study found, and this was published in the BM, BMC Medicine, this is an open access journal, again, essentially an inverse relationship between sauna therapy and cardiovascular disease. And you can see here in this image, improvement in nitric oxide activity and bioavailability, improvement in endothelial function, a reduction in blood pressure, even a reduction in triglycerides and an improvement in HDL cholesterol, which is great, a decrease in high sensitivity C-reactive protein, a reduction in reactive oxygen species, these are free radical species, an improvement in immune system functionality. So this was really big. I shared this image all throughout COVID-19. This was, I mean, January 2020 was when I started talking about sonotherapy as a, a, a immune modulatory therapy. A lot of people call me a quack and an idiot. Uh, I'm not going to listen to you, Mike. You're just a nutritionist, whatever. But, you know, the first time I got COVID in 2020, it was literally I got a backache for a couple of days and I lost my sense of smell for a little while, right? So in the five years leading up to that and then throughout the pandemic, I was using the sauna regularly. And so I think this is really important for people to recognize. Also a reduction in arterial stiffness and an improvement in arterial compliance. I want to highlight this because 
all throughout COVID and even today, this still holds true. The number one leading cause of mortality in most developed countries is cardiovascular disease. And so the uh, all statistics suggest that the reason why you will prematurely die is probably from a cardiovascular or cerebrovascular disease like having a stroke. And so if there's one thing that you can do in addition to exercising re regularly, walking, lifting weights, is going in the sauna at least four days per week. So um, one of the tools that I recommend is the uh, High Tech Health Infrared Sauna. Go check them out. You can tell them that High Intensity Health sent you. They will waive the shipping. This is a great at-home unit. We also have the sauna blanket from Bond Charge. That is a great unit as well. I'll put them, that in the description below. And we have related videos all about which sauna is best, whether it's a finished sauna, whether it's an infrared sauna. You know I'm biased because I have a classic finished sauna with a wood-fired stove from Kuma Lampa. So that's a great product, but also, you know, it's more involved. You know, you don't just hit a button and turn it on. You have to start a fire. So it really depends upon how serious you are about this, where you live, if you're a traveler, traveling nurse, healthcare practitioner, entrepreneur. Maybe you don't have access to it. So start with a sauna blanket, move into an infrared sauna, and then build a sauna in your backyard if you have the wherewithal. Uh, and certainly, last but not least, join a gym who has a nice sauna. So I really want to get to uh, the research finding that regular sauna therapy paired with exercise actually improves fat reduction. But first, just want to thank you all for being here. As always, hit that like button, leave a comment below if you're enjoying this research and review. So since we're talking about the sauna, it's really important to recognize that part of how sauna benefits you is getting you hot. And what that does is causes you to sweat, to dissipate body heat. And in that sweat, you release heavy metals, endocrine disrupting chemicals, possibly phthalates and BPA and all the nasty things. But when you're sweating, you can become dehydrated. So it's really important to support healthy hydration. One tool that we offer over at Myoscience is a unique combination of electrolytes paired with creatine to help optimize hydration as well as athletic performance. So this is a tool over 615 customers have reviewed in the last year over at myoscience.com. Just want to share with you two recent reviews. Uh, Nikki says, the best electrolyte I've ever tried. Love it, tastes great, and reduce my cramping, and it also has creatine. Also, Sophia recent, recently reviewed just yesterday, although I have been using electrolytes for a very long time, I still suffered from cramping. Uh, I have wanted to try the electrolyte sticks before this. This last year, I think I needed them. The creatine has an extra benefit. I think it has helped me because I had not had an issue since starting. So you can save using the code podcast over at Myoscience. There's a 45 serving container as well as a travel friendly stick packs. Again, use the code podcast at myoscience.com. I will link that below. So I offer this sort of hypothesis. If sauna was a drug, the media and big pharma would be all over it. This would be, they'd be talking about this left and right. You know, there's a, a drug, Ozempic, that's been, you know, recommended for weight loss and uh, food cravings. It's $1,200 a month. I mean, if you were to allocate those funds toward building a sauna, you'd have the best sauna in all of the land. Uh, and people are jumping all over this drug. And we now know there's a lot of side effects with this. Some people are having uh, paralysis of their stomach. They're have, having pancreatic issues and all that. So why not invest in other modalities that not only help with cardiovascular risk reduction, arterial compliance, blood pressure reductions, but also may enhance weight loss. And that is what is really interesting here about uh, uh, this particular study and all the research emerging, there's at least 15 conditions that are directly benefited by sauna therapy. And, and it's not just sauna therapy. I want to emphasize this. Going in the hot tub, going in the infrared sauna, possibly doing a sauna blanket, heat therapy in general is linked with improvements in cardiovascular function that has all these downstream health benefits. We talked about cardiovascular disease reduction. We talked about stroke reduction. We talked about the 63% reduction in, in sudden cardiac death, reduction in blood pressure, COPD, asthma, pneumonia, uh, psychotic disorders, depression, osteoarthritis. This image really conveys the message quite well. Linking the mechanistic targets that are targeted by getting hot on purpose and the outcomes. Really great image to help you add credence to this therapy that might be relegated to woo-woo or some, some such thing. But uh, again, I wager that if pharma could encapsulate the benefits of sauna, you would be hearing about it on all of the major news networks uh, and all the health experts would be promoting it, but but there's really no money to be made in, in sauna therapy, unfortunately. So anyhow, let's get into uh, how heat has metabolic 
properties and and is a, an acute metabolic stressor that leads to adaptive changes within your blood sugar system, your cardiovascular system, and also possibly improving body composition. So there was a study in 30,000 participants aged between 40 and 59 years old with no history of cardiovascular disease. And these subjects, when they went in a hot tub just twice per week, zero to twice per week, they had a 23 to 46% reduction in cardiovascular disease. So again, I talk about sauna a lot, but if you only have access to a hot tub, that is so much better than no heat at all. So just getting hot, and again, this was a, a prospective study in 30,000 individuals. Now, pairing sauna with exercise as it relates to improvements in body composition. We all wanna look better. We all want less visceral fat, belly fat. So what does it look like if you exercise and go in the sauna after your exercise session? Well, this was a clinical trial in overweight individuals. These subjects were all of Japanese origin and they were in their 60s, they were randomized to one of four different groups here. One group had an exercise regime as part of the intervention. They had a, a, a calorie-reduced diet and also hot sauna bathing. That was intervention A. Intervention B was just exercise and diet, sort of the classic thing people do. They want to lose weight. They're cutting the calories, exercising more. And uh, intervention C or group C was just doing the hot bathing, uh, the heat therapy, and group D was the control group. And what they found was that going in the sauna twice weekly and exercising uh, several days per week for three months, the group that did the exercise, the diet, as well as the, the sauna intervention uh, had significant improvements in body composition related uh, anthropometric biomarkers compared to the group who just did the heat therapy or exercise and diet therapy. So there is combined or synergistic benefits when you pair good nutrition with exercise and getting hot on purpose. So I just want you to, to recognize that. Now, the title of that study that I was just referring to is The Effects of a Comprehensive Intervention Program, Including Hot Bathing on Overweight Adults, a Randomized Controlled Trial. What they also found in that study, in addition to the improvements in body composition, was lower extremity function. Now, this is important for preventing falls and possibly uh, you know, bone fractures and things like that in elderly population. They found that the lower extremity function, that is walking speed and gait speed, had greater improvements in the participants in group A who paired exercise, good nutrition, and heat therapy compared to uh, all the other interventions. And so I think that's important to recognize that not only was there a greater reduction in specifically abdominal uh, adiposity, body mass index, body fat percentage, but also improvements in muscular function. So possibly because of the cardiovascular uh, risk reduction, improved blood flow, all of that, there was uh, beneficial effects. So getting back to the combined effects of exercise and sauna in a pre and post interventional design in which 77 participants with at least one cardiovascular risk factor were exposed to just 15 minutes of aerobic exercise on a cycle ergometer uh, followed immediately by 15 minutes of a sauna exposure. And there were positive alterations in arterial pressure, uh, pulse pressure, and the augmentation index. And these are all proxies of improved cardiovascular function. And so what uh, essentially what they found is that the, the pairing of exercise with sauna uh, significantly improves cardiovascular risk parameters in 77 subjects. There was also more evidence for the combined vascular effect in a crossover study using matched durations to explore the hemodynamic changes of sauna exposure compared with a combination of aerobic exercise and sauna exposure in middle-aged participants with cardiovascular risk factors. Both interventions elicit comparable acute uh, hemodynamic alterations, such as reduction in blood pressure and arterial pressure. So again, more evidence, more studies finding a combined effect. And I think this particular study is quite interesting. This was just in 16 patients with elevated blood pressure. This was uh, Geta et al. reported that exercise followed by a sauna session resulted in a significant decrease in daytime and 24-hour blood pressure, as well as total peripheral resistance. So one thing that we've talked about is blood viscosity and the problems therein. We have a whole video, or several videos about blood donation, blood viscosity, especially for men uh, of any age and, and postmenopausal women. We know that the hormonal changes after menopause causes women's blood viscosity to increase and increases cardiovascular risk factors while going in the sauna, getting hot, going in the hot tub, doing a sauna blanket, all of that decreases blood viscosity, improves blood flow and reduces vascular resistance. But again, hydration is important. So if you you sweat a lot, you have to maintain your fluids and also possibly use electrolytes. Another study in seven well-trained male cyclists found that after exposure of 30 minutes of a sauna session, 
After daily training for 10 consecutive days, the combined intervention resulted in a substantial expansion of blood volume after four exposures. Now, James DeNicolantonio, the author of The Salt Fix, has talked a lot about this blood volume and how blood volume improves athletic performance, strength, recovery. And so this is a great way to improve blood volume. Let's say you're going to train for a marathon or a half marathon. You know, the fall is coming up. Maybe it's a turkey trot, for example, or you're going to do a big hike. Uh, Going in the sauna can improve blood volume and athletic performance. Another study in in just 27 healthy pre-hypertensive men, so these are men with moderately or mildly elevated blood pressure, and they were exposed to just a sauna, and then they had the sauna after exercise and the sauna after strength training, and they found that the combined effects of pairing sauna with either endurance exercise or strength training leads to a reduction or the greatest reduction in blood pressure. So again, exercise is good, but pairing exercise with sauna therapy offers a a combined synergistic effect. And so again, if you have a gym, you know, seek out a gym that has a sauna or, or do the home workouts and then go into the sauna after you can have some beneficial effects. And last but certainly not least, this was a randomized controlled trial involving 47 middle-aged individuals with at least one traditional cardiovascular risk factor, such as elevated blood pressure, possibly increased waist to hip ratio, things like that. Uh, Eight weeks of regular sauna bathing uh, combined with exercise substantially and beneficially affected cardiorespiratory risk factors, systolic blood pressure, cholesterol levels compared to just exercise alone. And in this particular study of, of, again, 47 subjects, The mean reduction in systolic blood pressure was eight millimeters of mercury, which is quite interesting. So in conclusion, uh, evaluation of the independent and joint associations of high sensitivity C-reactive protein and sauna bathing with the risk of pneumonia from the uh, Kwayu cohort, and that this was the uh, heart disease uh, cohort that's been 39 years going since 1984, uh, found that elevated levels of C-reactive protein were associated with an increased risk of pneumonia and other infectious diseases, whereas frequent sauna baths were associated with a reduction in the risk of pneumonia, indicating that sauna therapy helps the immune system. And I say this because as we transition out of summer into fall, we have cold and flu season coming up. So if you don't want to get sick, going in the sauna makes a lot of sense. And part of that could be that in individuals who have some level of increased inflammation, high C-reactive protein, a lot of people are walking around with a CRP of one, two, uh, the highest I've seen is 30 in a really sick individual with autoimmune disease. Uh, The first thing that comes to mind, obviously, is diet change, but going in the sauna. It's like this is a great way to reduce that background inflammation. So um, the the ongoing uh, studies in Finland have found that the sauna therapy helps to mitigate and reduce the risk that inflammation has on the body. So that's, I think, really important. And the scientists say more eloquently, uh, frequent sauna baths have also been reported to offset the increased risk of pneumonia and COPD in men with issues with sedimentation rate and also uh, issues with C-reactive protein. So I think that is quite fascinating. So in conclusion, ample evidence suggests that exercise is great. Exercise and diet change is even better than just exercise alone. But what's superior to all of that is exercise, nutrition changes, and going in the sauna or going in the hot tub. So whatever modality you like, this is where people have a lot of nuances and questions, and we have a whole whiteboard video about the different types of heat therapy, whether it's a sauna blanket, infrared sauna, classic finish sauna, we'll talk about that later. But it's important to recognize that just getting hot, especially after exercise, has synergistic benefits, reducing your chances of succumbing prematurely to the most likely reason why you will die, which is heart disease and heart disease-related risk factors. So Do it for yourself. Do it for a better sex life. We know that about 30% of men have erectile dysfunction. We know there's also sexual dysfunction in women after menopause. It's been speculated that sauna therapy can help by improving the tone of the venous system, arterial compliance, reducing stiffness of the vessels. So many benefits here. And the least of which is improving sleep. We know that that sleep is very important. uh, And and so we should not um, discount that stress reduction you know, mental health issues are on the rise. So using heat is a great way to phase shift uh, your brain, your mood, and also have all these other health benefits with your lung, your heart, your muscles, and much more. So hopefully you found this review somewhat helpful. And I will link all the articles that we talked about in the show notes, so you can take a deeper dive. And again, if you want to get started on this, we have a whole walkthrough about how to build your own sauna. 
the infrared sauna that I recommend because it's very low in EMF. It's made here in the USA using uh, wood that hasn't been treated with chemicals and things like that is High Tech Health. I will link them in the description below. You can tell them that High Intensity Health sent you. They will waive shipping, give you a discount there. But getting hot on purpose is a great tool, my friends. Definitely consider this. It's changed my life. I hope it will change yours as well. Thanks for watching all the way through. Thanks for hitting that like button. Thanks for sharing this video with a friend and we will catch you on a future one down the road.